All right. Stay. Yes, sir. Y'all ready to get started? I am. I've been here. Yeah, you've been down there. Talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're taking notes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Glad to hear you're finally doing some business for the people. Good luck. Good luck. All right. <coughs> We're going to uh, call this meeting of the Transportation House Transportation Committee to order. We have a quorum. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to uh, recognize our new commissioner of the Georgia Department of Transportation, Commissioner Golden. You'd like to come up and say a few words to the committee? Well, we're glad to have you here today. Congratulations, and uh, we look forward to working with you. You've done a good job so far, and we know you'll continue to do a good job. Uh, at this time, we're going to, the first piece of legislation we're going to take up is House Bill 817. Y'all probably remember seeing this piece of legislation. It's a bill that we had in here that we voted out, then got the rules, and they come back with an amendment that, that needed to be added. And then they come up but with a second amendment. At that point, we just decided to bring it back to the full committee and let uh, let you, the committee members, being as you voted this bill out, decide if these are the changes y'all want made to the bill as well, uh, and then move it back into the uh, rules committee for consideration. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to recognize uh, Representative Nimmer uh, to speak to the amendments and the legislation. What what number are you, Jeff? Yeah. Representative Nimmer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do you uh, forgive me for not recognizing all the order of every every meeting? But should I go back through the original bill itself, or just go straight to the amendments? Just just uh, talk to the amendments. If okay. anybody has any other questions, they can they can talk to you about them. Okay, amendment uh, numbered AM three nine triple oh four. Let's make sure everybody. Do you have two amendments in your folders? Yeah. Make sure. Okay. All right, go ahead, Representative Nimmer. Okay, Amendment AM three nine triple oh four takes the uh, takes the negotiating range. We had changed it from one hundred thousand to two hundred fifty thousand. It brings it back down to two hundred thousand. Uh, we felt that would be a a better measure just uh, to bring that back down a little bit. And then the second amendment is AM three nine triple oh five. Does everybody have that? Everybody has it. All right. Let me see. Coming down to line 11, striking uh, a maximum of 15% of the cost and adding to line the minimal non-federal share uh, of the program. Uh, that is in, this, in section 9 of the original bill. Uh, yeah, and, and is it not true that in uh, section 9 the reason that we are, are changing this is because those those maximum percentages have changed over the years. Currently, for an example, right now, most of you have uh, heard of the the airport program as far as from the state and the federal and the local. That has been 95 uh, for the federal, 2.5 local, and 2.5 state. The feds have now just recently, within the last uh, week or so, come in and changed that program under their new funding bill. And it now is a 90% federal to a 5% state and 5% local. So the reason this language is being put in this legislation is so that just whatever the minimum non-federal share there is, uh, that way so that every time the feds change programs or whatever, we don't have to go back and look at this. Is that not true? Yes, sir. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Representative Garner. Does that mean, does the minimum function as the maximum as well? Right. Basically, yes. So that um, most of the time it's, you know, where we have like the program as I just described, uh, where, where that would only be 5%, uh -huh. whatever that, that minimum is. Right. And now it's 10%. Correct. Okay. And what if the state wanted to put more money in? They could? And they could. Okay. So it is truly the minimum, but it'll probably serve as the maximum. As, as well. Correct. Any other questions? All right. Hold on one thing. Representative Epps. Is, is this appropriate time to ask a question on the bill outside of the amendments or just the amendments? 
No, she, you can uh, go ahead. You can ask questions on the bill. No, I, I just, uh, it may be, uh, perhaps then the member might want to uh, help us under, or, or defer to uh, give us, uh, you know, in talking with some of the contractors, uh, they have the concern about removing the sunset provision from this. Uh, could you help enlighten us or get someone to help enlighten us? As to I'd be glad to get someone to help enlighten the panel this, up here today. <laughs> this is uh, something that needs to be a part of this. What, y yes, sir. We'll, we'll let Commissioner Golden speak to this. Thank you. Okay. Is this is this on? Yes. All right. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I think you know one of the things we work with the Contractors Association to try to come up with that number. What is the appropriate number? Uh, the sunset was uh, 2014, I believe, is when it was going to go back to 2015. From a Department of Transportation standpoint, it makes it very difficult to try to plan your program with the, something that's at, lingering out there. We would actually have to assume that 15% was our max in terms of using that as a delivery strategy in the future. So it would be very much a, a, a difficulty of doing that. And design build obviously has become very more, much more popular within the state of Georgia. It's also uh, the preferred delivery in many other states. So we've worked with the contractors to get it up to that 50% level as well as to remove the sunset so we didn't have to work around that or assume the worst case scenario. Okay. You don't think it'd be advantageous just to say move sunset to 2020 or whatever? It'd be Again, it, it's just always going to be lingering out there as we get closer to that, you know, in the future at some point. We're, when we're making a decision on how we're going to deliver projects that are two and three years out, because you start your preliminary engineering work, as you know, three and four years out and getting your preliminary design, working on your environmental document, and then getting your right away. If you're going to have to do a traditional design bid build, you need to know that several years in advance of that. So it changes the way you actually manage that project and how you're going to deliver it. So we would prefer to see it out. And I thought we had concurrence from most of the highway contractors, but I'm not 100% sure of that. Thank you. Um, Representative Gardner. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Um, I understand the limitations of a sunset. I mean, in, uh, in the MARTA bill, for example, we've had a sunset provision that has hampered the ability of MARTA to do long-range planning for a number of years, and it's it's fortunate that this committee has passed twice an amendment that would do away with that 50-50 uh, guideline that um, is sunset now, I think, in 2014. Is that 2013? Yeah. Thank you, Mike. What about your seat, mate? There next to Rick and the two of you. Okay. I just wanted to point out <laughs> that there is a similarity in that sunset to some other legislation that we have had in this committee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Working Chairman. Working in a bipartisan manner. Uh, well, we hope we are hoping <laughs> that that will be the case. Hey, any other questions for the author? Uh, Chair, and hearing none at this time, let's take up uh, Amendment AM three nine zero zero four. Do I have a motion? Move. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Chair, hearing none. Uh, all those in favor, let it know by saying aye. All opposed, like sign. All right, AM 39005. Have a motion. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? All right, now, on HB 817, as amended, what do I hear? Do I have a motion? I have a motion. Do I have a second? Any further discussion on House Bill 817 as amended? Chair, hearing none, what is the pleasure? Move. Second. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Like sign. All right. We'll move it on to rules, did we? I'm reading and thinking all at the same time here. That's, that's scary. All right. I want to make sure that y'all really wanted to move that bill. All right. I want to come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Representative Nimmer, now you got to get it out of rules. We don't want it coming back to the to the committee again. I understand brevity now, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh? It'll be. All right. Uh, now we're going to take up Senate Bill 339. Representative Chokas, you can't get the senator to come across? Uh, I think you're from me. <laughs> I don't know. We kind of like to hear from the Senate. They kind of. No, make... I did mention it to him, and I think he has a previous engagement. 
Well, I'm, I'm sure you need to make him aware of that you will not be able to ask for this bill out of rules if it gets out of this committee. He will definitely have to come and appear before the Rules Committee in order to get it out. I'll be happy to tell him that. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to present Senate Bill 339. And uh, what this uh, legislation does is um, changes the uh, uh, or transfers the aviation assets personnel from uh, the Georgia Aviation Authority back to the Department of Natural Resources and back to the State Forestry Commission. Um, when the Aviation Authority was created, we took those aviation assets away from those agencies and put them in the Aviation Authority. And um, I think that uh, it's going to work much better if we give those aviation, aviation assets back to DNR and forestry because uh, these uh, aircraft and personnel were used for specific purposes within each of those agencies. Uh, we did this uh, last year with the uh, Georgia State Patrol, and it has worked very, very well. Um, and I'd like to talk about uh, a recommended um, amendment uh, to Senate Bill 339 at this time, if that's okay. Do we have a copy of the amendment? Don't have a copy of the amendment? I thought we did. I'm sorry if y'all don't have well, one. Now, was it the amendment that we adopted in the uh, subcommittee? The that's day? correct. Well, it's already in here as a sub. It come, right. out of the, uh, come out of the subcommittee as a substitute. Thank you. And it is now in this. Fantastic. Well, let me talk to that. Thank you for correcting me. Um, in the Senate substitute, what we're doing is transferring a, a King Air 90 from the Aviation Authority back to uh, transportation. And the um, Department of Transportation wants to use that for uh, uh, aerial photography. And um, so that's what passed out of the sub. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. All right. Representative Horton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative, good to see you. Uh, I recall a couple of years ago when we, uh, when we dealt with this the very first time and some, a pretty compelling argument was made about the, uh, the savings to the taxpayers of this state by combining this specifically in regards to mechanics and maintenance costs and that sort of thing because, uh, you know, every department, every aircraft, um, you know, would be in a centralized location, if you will, to where they could, you know, buy things like fuel filters and that sort of thing as opposed to not being able to buy in bulk if each department had one of these and one of those type of deals. Is, I'm just a little confused. I know last year we dealt with the state patrol, but was the evidence brought before us a couple of years ago? Uh, was that was that not true? I mean, what is the at the end of the day, besides these agencies now having these aircraft in their hangars, so to speak, what's the benefit to the taxpayers? Well, um, I'll be happy to address that, and it's a very good question. Uh, the Aviation Authority was the brainchild of a former governor, and it actually expanded government. Uh, I don't mind telling you that it was, in my opinion, not the best of ideas that, that, that came across uh, our desk that year. Uh, as far as the, um, and the reason I say that is because the aviation assets have different purposes. Uh, the reason we took them out of state patrol, the helicopters, the rotaring aircraft, is because the state troopers use that for law enforcement. And they have a specific job that they use those things for. As a matter of fact, if you talk with State Patrol, they are trained as a trooper first and as a pilot second. So they act in law enforcement capacity. Now you take Department of Natural Resources and the Forestry Commission. Um, if you're familiar with what forestry does with the aircraft, is they go out and look for fires and then they act as support in the fighting and combating of these fires. Basically, they've got a small single-engine aircraft, and they're usually a 170, maybe 172 or 182 Cessna, and they're circling forestry. In the original proposal, we were going to collect all the assets and bring them up to date, bring them new, sell the ones that weren't necessary, and uh, the original proposal was to make all the pilots post-certified which meant that they were going to have for forestry a guy that could carry a gun uh, and I don't know if he was going to shoot the fires out or what but it was totally unnecessary and so what we're doing is we're taking those specific aviation assets that those agencies had before and giving them back to them for the purpose which they were intended 
I mean, you're not going to need um, a 172 uh, flying for state patrol and and so forth. I mean, you know, if different aircraft have different purposes, and the same thing with Department of Natural Resources. They have uh, unique needs, and the aircraft that they had uh, was to serve those unique needs, and that's what we're doing. We're putting them all back. Um, so, in my opinion, I think it's going to save money for the taxpayers, and I think it's going to require the agencies to be more um, prudent in their uh, um, allocations of funds for aircraft, because they've got to maintain them. They've got to operate them, own them, maintain them, fuel them, and make sure that the pilots are certified and remain certified. And on uh, piston-driven aircraft, you know, you've got to have a, an annual done every year. So they're going to be more prudent with the dollars that we give them in our state budget. I hope that answers your question. You done? Um, Rep Chairman Dollar. Thank you. Uh, this bill doesn't do away with the aviation authority. What is going to be the function of the authority moving forward should this bill pass? Thank you, Chairman Dahl. That's a great question. The Aviation Authority is still going to handle some funds available for the executive branch and other branches that needs to, to use aircraft. And this would be aircraft for mostly for transportation. Let's say um, the governor needs to go someplace. Well, he'll be able to use the Aviation Authority to either lease aircraft or uh, to, to budget aircraft that they may need for, for those functions. It's going to act, uh, it's going to be greatly reduced and have a one or two person staff and it's going to be dealing with the dollars and cents. The dollars and cents in what regard? If they need to lease an aircraft, that's where the money will go to so that the Aviation Authority will be able to lease the aircraft. And this is solely under the uh, so under the governor's office or the executive? It no, I mean other agencies can make agencies. requests for aircraft through the Aviation Authority okay. and then they have to pay the Aviation Authority for the use of the aircraft, but they will act as a more of a bookkeeping administrative arm. Thank you. They will not maintain pilots and aircraft and so forth. Representative Gardner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Following up on Representative Hardin's excellent question. I mean, it seems to me the reason we would make another switch, regardless of the, who the governor is, would be that we have some demonstrated fiscal information about the fact that it cost us more to go to the, to the last procedure which was sold to us because it was going to save money. Now you say putting it back will save money. Do we have any analysis of any sort? <coughs> showing what the cost was of, of creating the authority and moving all the planes and then well the original intent of the authority no I don't have that I mean, so there I was no fiscal note that went with no, the previous there bill nor there mm -hmm. is there one that goes with this bill mm -mm. so we're just we're just hoping I don't um, I, 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 I'm, Chairman Roberts I'm going to have to ask you for a question on this does this legislation need a fiscal note no it doesn't need a fiscal note, and in my opinion, and I could be wrong on this, but planes are being paid for now, now whether we're shifting the, the cost from the Aviation Authority back to the original departments. So when we go through the budget process, those departments are actually responsible for maintaining the aircraft that were their responsibility originally, and they were paying money to the Aviation Authority to use them again. So let's take this step back out and let them pay for it themselves. What, what, what you say makes sense. I just wondered if there was any documentation of any kind, because I think we operated last time on a hope that it would save money. It was a hope that they saved money, and I think they also wanted to upgrade the aviation assets, too. And that didn't happen either. Representative Epps. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Chuck was going back to Paragraph D about the transfer of that particular aircraft to, to GDOT. Yes, sir. It's my understanding that GDOT contracts out its aerial photography. We're assuming probably that's the most cost-efficient way to, to do this for clarity and understanding. Uh, this provides that if they have, if they wish to continue private contracting of aerial photography, they 
they can dispose of this what aircraft it does, and use uh, those funds to enhance that program? Uh, by transferring this aircraft to, to GDOT at this time, GDOT gets it scot-free. But what, what this legislation does is it gives them the ability to acquire aircraft in the future, maintain aircraft in the future, and so forth. That's, that's what it does. It does the same thing that we're doing for DNR and for forestry, and which we've already done for state patrol. Because uh, without this legislation, they can't have any aviation assets. But disposal is their call. If they want to dispose of that airplane, they certainly can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Harden. Very brief question. If one of these planes, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do. I really do. I, I have the utmost respect for DNR and forestry both. But let's assume that now a plane, an aircraft goes to forestry, and Monday through Thursday of next week it's not being used. Other ones within aviation are what is the protocol for another state agency to request a plane that this bill is going to pull out of the Aviation Authority? What's the protocol now for for them to be able to acquire that from, from one of these two agencies? Uh, let me kind of explain something about aviation assets. The, um, the planes in forestry are designed for forestry. They're buying a specific plane for a specific purpose. Now, if you want to move that airplane to another agency to be utilized, you would probably not want that particular airplane. 172 is not a fast airplane, and it doesn't hold but maybe four people. And one of those has to be the pilot. So I doubt seriously that someone would want to use that to go someplace and, 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 and use it. So, I mean... You're not going to want, like we did with the State Patrol, State Patrol uses their helicopters for law enforcement. Um, I'm, I'm kind of not, I don't think I'm answering your question, but I don't think the question can be answered is what I'm trying to say. Those aviation assets are, have specific purposes. It's, uh, and if you wanted to move uh, a plane from forestry and use it for something else, what would you use it for? Well, that's that's my question. I mean, if there was another agency that, in your words, needed a slow airplane uh, because everything else was currently taken, let's say that they needed a plane for next Wednesday, every other aircraft in the Aviation Authority is spoken for, it just so happens Forestry has one that they're not using this week because the entire state's under rain. Let's assume that. What's the protocol for a needing agency to acquire that aircraft from Forestry? Well, they wouldn't be acquiring that aircraft from Forestry. They'd be going to the F Aviation Authority. So, okay, that you're getting close to an answer then. So, so if we move these aircraft to DNR and to forestry on top of Chairman Dollar's question, you will, these agencies will be able to go to the Aviation Authority to ask for a forestry aircraft? No. These agencies will, will be not. able to go to the Aviation Authority and request them to lease them an aircraft. Wow. Thank you. Hopefully, though, to your point, our agencies would be willing to work with one another in this. Uh, but I understand where you're going. Representative Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Chokas, we all these aircrafts go back to each department. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the funds to operate them now? Are we just going to give them to them? Yes, sir. It will be part of their budget. The, the, the I mean, money are they going to get a extra money to to uh, in their budget now to three years ago they had that money and we moved that to the aviation authority and then they funded the aviation authority to get those airplanes so now it's part of their responsibility those different agencies to uh, to take care of those aviation assets but in forestry as you know they need those planes to help uh, spot and fight fires I, that that's no problem there, but I'm just saying what I'm trying to say is that the department going to have the money to operate the planes. We haven't grounded the airplanes with the Aviation Authority. They're still out there. I'm just trying to take away one of those loops. Right. Thank you. Chairman Dollar. To my friend. Um, 
when we did this bill a number of years ago, there there was some hesitation because we were um, some in some views uh, uh, in creating another agency, increasing the size of government, so on and so forth. Um, I'm just trying to understand how we're going back to square one, but we're still keeping that level of government. And I understand it's going to be significantly small in reduction, one to two people, but there's going to be other expenses um, that go along with that. So we're starting back from where we started, mm -hmm. but we still have this authority. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess what my question is, is um, how are we going, how is the savings going to be realized by keeping it as opposed to what we had before? Because in my view, all things being equal, that's essentially what we're doing here. It's basically a shift for the maintenance and the operation and the maintaining of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. uh, having that aviation authority um, to handle forestry's aircraft and to handle the DNR's aircraft and to handle um, uh, State Patrol's aircraft. Um, I mean, I realize what they were trying to do, but I think, you know, it would be like creating a, a, another department to handle equipment. This is just simply aviation equipment that needs for the, these agencies need for the operation of, and the function that they do. And, and Mr. Chairman, follow up. Um, who who is because uh, there's no way for us to know sitting right here how the savings are realized who's uh, who's in, uh, i guess telling us that there will be a savings is it coming from the department is it coming from the governor's office um who's driving that that instead of going back to the way it was before completely that we're going to keep this and it's going to it's it's going to be more efficient it's going to save money who who's telling us that who can we go talk to well, the governor's office. I'm going to get Jeff up here to help me with this one, if it's okay. Well, let's let's sure. let's hold on a second. Let's 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 finish your questions, and then we'll we'll allow Jeff to come up and speak if he'd like to. Okay. Okay. And then we'll allow you to come back, Representative Gardner. Last question. Sorry, Mr. Chairman and uh, Representative Chokas. I think this is, seems to me to be a a common sense good idea. My concern is about our process, Mr. Chairman, and on page four, line one, starting on 126, it talks about um, an audit of this authority, a copy of which was supposed to be delivered to you last year, and I just, I noticed that that's now being struck, and so we won't require an audit in the future, and did you receive such an audit? Not that I'm aware of, and I... I don't re recall an audit, Representative Gordon. I, in fact, I just asked Abby, did she remember one coming in as well? I'm not saying I didn't, but I do not recall it. I'm sure you would have sent it to each of us if you had. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, Representative Geisinger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not. Since we're close to a budget for 2013. Is the budget assuming that this legislation will pass? Well, the operation of the planes by the agencies or the operation of the aircraft under the Aviation Authority is the same airplanes. And if I'm not mistaken, in, in, in I think the funding that the agencies were getting was being sent to the Aviation Authority to, to fund the aircraft that they were using. Further question, Mr. Chairman? It, that being the case, uh, what you're saying is, is that basically all the money is being transferred either from one to another. Where's the savings? Well, I mean, the savings are, will be... Are we doing this based on the savings? No, convenience for the agencies and the better better operation of the aircraft that they have for their use. I mean, I, Matt got onto the the savings of the dollars and everything, but it, fuel has the same price. Maintenance of the aircraft has the same price. So basically, it's revenue neutral, or expenditure neutral. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chairman Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to um, 
Rep Representative Gardner's question on the audit. Uh, the audit was done, and that the the language is being stricken because it's it's irrelevant at this point because, since we're past 2010. The as an authority, all authorities have to do a financial audit every year and submit it to the Department of Audit. So so that's not a, a an issue. This is there's no red herrings there in the audits. Um, I think the bigger question. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I saw it. I, I can't. I can't. Uh, verbatim on what it is, but yes, I saw it. Um, Representative Chokas, just to, to represent Dollar's point, um, if we move forward with the bill, why are we not eliminating the Aviation Authority? I think that's what his, when you get down to it, why not just eliminate it? Why does the Governor's Office need an Aviation Authority to lease a plane? Well, how will the Executive Branch get aircraft to use? That, that's, I think that's to the point. I'm, I'm not, I was trying to, to, to help clarify the question. I mean, they could have staff lease a plane, and that's, that's the, without yeah. an aviation authority. And that's, I mean, I they're think not that's going to go to forestry to this. get a plane. They're not going to go to uh, the state patrol to get a plane. That You know, they're going to, if they need to use transportation, they've got uh, the aviation authority, and they'll be able to, to budget that expense appropriately. Okay, and the, the question is why? Why do we need? Why do they have to have an aviation authority to do that? Can't the staff of the, the governor's office just call up to any private plane leasing company and, and lease a plane? That's that's where they're going with this. If we're going to put all the assets back, okay, say we all agree we're going to put all the assets back, okay, mm -hmm. to all the different departments because of efficiency and ease of operation for that department to to properly go out and and perform the functions of that department. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I think we can all agree on that part of it. I think Representative Dollar's question is is okay. We agree to do all that. The the, the Why remaining have the shell still there. The remaining aviation assets are going to be sold. If I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken, there's additional aviation assets that are going to be sold. Right, and and that was the testimony we had before, and I mm -hmm. understand that. Yet we're not eliminating the aviation authority, and that's what where he's getting at. Well, without those aviation assets at our disposal, how are we going to get aircraft? Well, well uh, I guess he's going to come up yeah, and speak to it, but I, I got gotcha. you. Actually, Senator Miller, you want to help help Representative Chokas out here a little bit? I'd be delighted to. Uh, I'm not sure the, the uh, line of the question, but uh, Jeff Crane could uh, help us as well. Come on up, Jeff. Um, and I, I think he'd probably, uh, I'd like to speak as well, but we'll start here. Okay. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jeff Strain. Um, the, the purpose for the, to keep the authority is to aggregate all the usage on the twin engine fixed wing. So all the various agencies, whether it's the governor's office or economic development, they use approximately 1,000, 1,200 hours. And so 339 returns the DNR assets and the forestry assets back to those agencies as they came over. 414 last year did the same thing with state patrol assets. So the remaining assets in the authority are the twin engine fixed wing, the, the King Air assets. What the proposal is, which is being reviewed right now, actually it's an RFP on the street, keep the King Airs, the money's in the budget to provide 1,000 hours to the various agencies that call up and say I need to go from point A to point B, or to consider the authority to consider to outsource that with the RFP. If you were to go to the internet right now and, and type in I want a King Air for one hour, you're going to pay approximately $1,000. If you take our hours divided by our budget, we're over $2,000. So at, on the table is the savings of roughly you know, $800 to $1,000 per hour times 1,000. To the point earlier about the savings before, as we went from 55 aircraft in the aggregated authority and sold and went down to 40 aircraft, each of those sales and the money proceeds from that went back to the Treasury over the last couple of years. So that's where the savings went. Chairman Dollar. So just to clarify that the authority will will still be, in, be will still have under its assets the the twin engine fixed wing, correct? Uh, uh, it either that yes. So that's the, on in play right now is to keep the twin engine fixed. 
or to use the authority as a contracting vehicle to aggregate the thousand hours, place that in the marketplace, and then sell the King Airs. Representative Harden. Thank you, sir. I think you're going to bring some clarity here. Will the pilots and the mechanics and additional staff, will they leave the Aviation Authority if this bill passes, go with these aircraft to the said departments? Yes, sir. Um, the ones that came over go back. So this is, if you were to go to the enabling Senate Bill 85 legislation, the money that came over, the people and the staff go back dollar for dollar. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak on behalf of this bill? Any closing arguments? I think it's, uh, yeah, I respectfully ask that y'all uh, uh, get the due pass recommendation. Uh, I think it's a uh, good policy for the state, and I think it puts the planes back to where they need to be utilized. Okay. You want to add anything to that, Senator? I think that uh, this bill is going to be good business sense, and it's using our assets to the greatest resource. You're using the greatest resources, and uh, it's what you would do in your business. You would own, you know, multiple aircraft for you know thousand or twelve hundred dollars a year, and to that end, we want to run government as efficiently as possible. And I think this is toward that end. Okay. Hold on. We got a question, Representative Williams. Senator, thank you. I, I just have a quick question for you. It kind of made me perk up there, and I appreciate Move what over you to said. the mic, Butch, if you don't mind. Sure. Yes, sir. I appreciate your statement. Tell me something. I'm Help me with my history. Mm -hmm. If it's good business today, what happened when it got to where it is? And tell me why it's there now, and why is it good business now, and how long have we let this good business go lacking? Well, I haven't been here a long time, but I got here as quick as I could. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> so Me I too. Can't speak to the, <laughs> I can't speak to the history of the uh, aviation uh, department and, uh, and the state's aviation interests or different uh, uh, <laughs> legislatures or different legislators or different uh, executives' affinity for aviation. I can only speak to this bill and to the history of of it since this time, but I do re recognize your your question is that it was it was brought uh, brought together, and now we're taking it back apart, so to speak. And I, I appreciate that comment very much. I'm not being uh, flippant with it. Well, let, me, let me let me before before you go any further, if I might, have you got anybody with you can't answer that question? I just want to know what the trail is on this because this didn't just fall out the sky. Something happened down the road, and somebody ought to know something about why we're there now. And was it such good business then that it was done then? And how did business get so much better? Now we got to do it differently. I just want to know where sometimes down the road we won't make these mistakes again. Sir, Tell us. Where, 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 well, does anybody can, know why? I can why? answer some of that. You know, it's kind, of, it's kind of like a lot of times. We, we, we do some things in here thinking we're going to make things better and we screw it up. Screw it up. And uh, I think that's what, we, what happened. But. We did sell off some of the assets and some of the, the uh, planes and all that needed to be surplus that needed to be sold to try to trim it down. Uh, uh, according to the information that we received, we will now save money by moving it back. It was, I think it was a novel idea at the time, and it's something mm -hmm. that we looked at and we've tried it and found out maybe that's not the best way to do things. And, uh, Just ask Mr. Chairman, is it all right? Would, would you mind asking the Aviation Authority next year or year after, about tell us how much money we've saved to have we just moved papers? Well, I, I will, I'll be glad to do that. But the Aviation Authority, if we pass this bill, is basically just going to be sitting there handling a few flights. The, the assets are now going to be back underneath the other state agencies. So they really will not have a major function as we move forward in this state. We're actually pretty much dissolving the authority with the exception of they're going to help book private planes for for some. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, Representative Geisinger. You wave. Any other questions? Pat, 
I'm sorry, Pat. I hit the wrong. No, I was just, I was just going to say but the problem that w some of us have in this room is that we were here before, and we're yes, we're glad that Senator Miller finally got here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I got here as quick as I could. Yeah. <laughs> the only problem was you you ran for the lesser chamber. I mean, <laughs> and <laughs> well, Mr. Chairman, if you just forgive me for the error of my ways. No, I'm Thank just playing. Much. Hold on one second, oh, Representative yes, Epps. Let yes, me sir. just one thing. Certainly, based on everything we've heard, is basically the response responsibility and the function of this authority going to be assist in renting aircraft? That's correct. We're going to, we're going to take bids. In fact, that's, as uh, uh, Mr. Strain uh, pointed out earlier, we have a bid out on the street now. We're getting the, that information back. Um, and uh, we think this will be the most efficient way. And, and the aviation authority will exist, but it will not exist in its former grandeur. So it, it's going to exist, so it's going to require an appropriation? It's, it's very little. Very little. Uh, not, it will, all the assets from the uh, Forestry Commission going back to Forestry, all the assets for DNR going back to DNR. State Patrol has their aircraft, and we're going to take bids and uh, eliminate uh, excess equipment, aircraft, and expense. So if Forestry needs to lease or rent an aircraft, they can't do it, but the authority is going to have to be the one to do it. Is that for accountability? They, they will have their own aircraft, but if I can't imagine why they would need that, but because uh, they have their own aircraft now. No, but I mean, so we're looking at who is being potential runners for aircraft. Other agencies, Other agencies within the that state. have no access to aircraft. That's correct. Thank you. Is there no further questions, Your um, Your Honor? <laughs> Hold on, you got one more that just showed up, Representative Anderson. I'm trying to get out of here, Representative Anderson. Oh. <laughs> uh, why can't the secretary of that agency get the bid on a plane? I'm sorry? Why can't the the staff in that agency that does not have a plane? I understand your question. Yes, sir. Uh, well, uh, uh, the, get the quote on a bid on a plane. The uh, concept and idea is that if one agency is renting, uh, taking the bids and uh, just in the volume discount and is, expect to uh, take advantage of economies of scale, that would be multi happen over multiple rentals. All right. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anybody else? Chair hearing none at this time. We um we we need to uh offer or I'm going to offer an amendment, uh a little cleanup that was just actually uh on line four. Um after resources, put a comma and strike and. After commission, put a put and Department of Transportation. That would be it. We didn't add Department of Transportation in in the preamble to the bill as we were moving. To. Department of Transportation. Is on page two. So being as we added, give them an airplane, when we actually went back in and amended the bill, that wasn't put in. So I need to offer that in the form of a motion. Any discussion on it? I have a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, like sign. All right, now, on SB 339, substitute SB 339 as amended. Do I have a motion? I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a second. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed? All right. Now moves on to rules. Thank you all so much. And at this time, we have no further business coming before us. Uh, we stand adjourned. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>